can you really get into a usable CNC router for under a thousand bucks? Welcome back to the channel, everyone. I'm Brett, and this is my laser and CNC garage. Thanks for coming back if you're subscribed, and if you're just now finding the channel, thanks for stopping by. Today, we'll be taking a look at the new Masuder 3S CNC by Fox Alien. I'll be honest, I've heard of Fox Alien in the past, but never really paid much attention to them in the CNC space. I figured their stuff was kind of cheap, would take forever to put together, and barely work. I couldn't have been more wrong. This CNC may be on the smaller end size-wise, but it is nothing but cheap. Stick around and let's take a look at what this machine has to offer. Thank you very much to Fox Alien for sending the CNC out to the garage for my review. As I said earlier, when I first got into CNCs, I saw Fox Alien out there along with similar brands offering desktop style machines. One thing that always kept me away from a desktop style CNC was the assembly. They were made up of a bunch of aluminum extrusions, tiny stepper motors and belts, a rat's nest of wiring, and a weak spindle. Oh, and they took a day to put together too. So before I opened the box to the Masuda 3S, my expectations were not very high. When I did open the box, I was kind of blown away actually. I found a really nice looking, well-packaged machine, broken down into a few large pre-assembled components, and a clear instruction manual with pictures. Not just a box of aluminum, wires, screws, and a poorly translated photocopied instruction pamphlet. Assembly took me about 30 minutes and just consisted mainly of putting the X-Rails together and installing the gantry on top. All of the wires were neatly pre-installed in the drag chain and all the connections were very clearly marked. The Masuda 3S has an engraving area of 400 millimeters by 400 millimeters or 15 and 3 quarters inch by 15 and 3 quarters inch with a Z working height of 95 millimeters or 3.74 inches. There's also an extension kit coming out this month, which can increase the work area to 400 by 800 millimeters if you need more size. The X and Y axes are belt driven with steel wheels and the Z axis is extra beefy with dual linear rails and lead screws, which greatly improve accuracy. Best of all, the Masuda 3S comes with four NEMA 23 closed loop stepper motors, which enables great step loss control, allows for greater and smoother movement speeds, and lower noise level. At the heart of this CNC is a 400 watt spindle, but the unit also includes a 65 millimeter spindle clamp, which will allow a trim router to be attached. The controller has also been upgraded to a more compact design and an aluminum extrusion was added under the spoil board for extra stiffness. It also comes with a convenient Z probe for easy Z height zeroing. So now that we've learned a little about the CNC, let's put it to the test. For my testing, I really want to push this thing. I don't want to just run a quick engrave and some MDF. Let's see if this CNC can actually make a real product in hardwood. For this test, I'm going to use a file I've created in the past for an address sign that I've sold. If you want to see a little more about how I made this file, you can check out this video here. The CAD program I use to make my CNC files is called Carbide Create, and the regular version is free. I've upgraded to the paid pro version, so I'm able to export my designs as G-code then run it through a free program called Universal G-Code Sender to run on the Masuda 3S. If anyone's interested in more of the CAD and CAM side of CNC's, let me know in the comments and I'll make some more videos which go into more detail. I think this project will put this CNC to the test, especially because I want to use the included 400 watt spindle. To speed things up and to push the machine even harder, I want to use a quarter inch end mill. To make that happen, I installed an ER11 collet into the spindle, which will allow me to fit a quarter inch tool. This doesn't come with the CNC, but they're cheap, like 10 bucks on Amazon. A quarter inch end mill will push the spindle hard, but I think it can handle it. But I guess we'll find out. For this project, I'm using three quarter inch solid birch, which I've stained black, and my tool is a quarter inch compression end mill. I'm not really taking advantage of this compression bit because my depth of cut will be pretty shallow, but I wanted to use a really sharp bit, and this is the best one I have. First, I ran some quick pocketing tool pass in order to test fit an inlaid branding medallion. After a few tries, I got the fit perfect. Now, let's run the actual test. This isn't going to be the fastest job, but again, I wanted to see if the included spindle could handle it. I have to take it easy at first. I'm running this pocket tool path at 40 inches per minute at a depth of cut of 0.03 inches. I'm also ramping into the cuts 20 degrees to help minimize the stress on the bit and the spindle. The most important thing I'm going for here is quality of cut. I want as little post-processing on this pocket as possible. 
A little extra time in the toolpath will save a bunch of tedious sanding. If you're really observant, you'll also notice my spoil board looks a little different compared to the stock version. There was nothing wrong with the stock version, but I'm experimenting with this new design, which features some increased rigidity, dog holes, and some additional clamping features. If you're interested in seeing more of this design, let me know in the comments down below. Check out this finished product. This is right after the file ended with no sanding or anything. I am really happy with how this turned out and impressed how the Masuda 3S handled this material. Let's get this off the CNC, clean it up a little bit, and put some finish on it. Wow, this came out fantastic. I know this is a simple project, but when you're starting out, things don't need to be overcomplicated. This is a clean, simple design and something useful. So now that our test project is done, let's get into what I like about this CNC. First off, the price. At under a thousand bucks, this is an affordable CNC that will get you in the game learning about CNC routers. I was also pleasantly surprised about how easy it was to put together. The power of the stepper motors, spindle, and the working size will allow you to work on some real projects. This would be good for valet trays, small signs, and a bunch of other smaller projects. I was also really impressed that it handled a quarter inch end mill. When using the quarter inch bit, I did have to lower the feed rate and depth of cut a little bit, but the end result was really nice. And I'm glad because I really wanted to use the spindle because they're so much quieter than trim routers and you can adjust the RPM as well as turn it on and off through the G code. Who's forgotten to turn their router on before running a file? Not me. <laughs> yeah, right. It's great though that Fox Alien also includes a 65 millimeter mount for a trim router. This lets you run any 65 millimeter router like the Makita version, and Fox Alien also sells a pretty nice little trim router as well. Although they are louder and aren't controlled by G-code, they do offer more power versus the 400 watt spindle. If anyone's interested, maybe I'll make a video testing the trim router. Let me know. Finally, Fox Alien is a big name in the desktop CNC space and offers great customer support, which includes tech support, help articles, and also a robust user support forum. These CNCs have a pretty big following. The Masuda 3S definitely has some great qualities, but here's a couple things I think that can be improved. First is dust collection. You may have noticed me using a dust boot during the testing of the CNC and it worked perfect. Why am I saying this is something that can be improved then? Well, it's because I purchased the Fox Alien dust boot separately. It wasn't included with the CNC. It works really well and fits on the spindle and also on the 65 millimeter router too. I like it so much, I think it should come standard with the CNC. Even if the price had to be increased a little bit to account for it, dust collection is an important aspect of CNC milling and running without it could be a frustration for a new user. Second, I wish this came with some more starter bits. Now, it did come with a bunch of eighth inch shank 30 degree V bits, but I think it should have come with a few eighth inch shank upcut or downcut end mills, plus maybe a 60 or 90 degree V bit as well. You can make a ton of projects with just those two or three bits, I was a little disappointed when I assembled the CNC because I didn't have any eighth inch shank bits at that time. I had to wait a couple of days for some to arrive from Amazon before I was really able to play with the CNC. But for now, just be aware of those two things if you're interested in picking up the CNC in the future so you can hit the ground running when it arrives in the mail. I am not gonna lie. At first, I was skeptical of the CNC and what it could do, but it has proven itself to be very capable and user-friendly. If you're looking to get into CNC milling, this is a great budget option with lots of features that you normally only see in higher price machines. With it, I was able to recreate a product that I make and sell using a CNC that costs about four times as much as the Masuda 3S. Now, this is not gonna replace my Shapeoko 5 Pro anytime soon, but it proves this CNC is capable as both a hobby and business machine if you're looking to get into a side hustle at a fraction of the cost. They even have a laser module that attaches as well making it even more versatile. I can see why these Fox Alien machines have quite a fan base behind them. It's nice to see a company that is continually improving and standing behind its products. Thanks again to Fox Alien for sending the CNC to the garage for my review. If you've made it this far into the video, thank you so much for watching. If you found any value in this video, please make sure to hit the thumbs up button to like the video and make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on anything. If you have any questions about this CNC or anything in general, leave them in the comments below and I'll be sure to answer them. And if you like this video, don't forget to check out my other laser and CNC videos showing up on your screen in just a few seconds. I'm actually giving away a free 20 watt diode laser soon. So make sure to check out that video if you're interested in winning. 
Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you on the next one.